Today we're going to begin a new book. Junie B. Jones has a monster under her bed. Written by Barbara Park, illustrated by Denise Brunkus. All right, chapter one. The Cheese Man. My name is Junie B. Jones. The B stands for Beatrice, except I don't like Beatrice. I just like B, and that's all. I am in the grade of afternoon kindergarten. Today, we got school pictures taken at that place. School pictures is when you wear your bestest dress and you go to the cafeteria and a cheese man is there. He makes you say cheese, only I don't actually know why. <clears throat> then he takes pictures of you and your mother has to buy them or else you will get your feelings hurt. School pictures is our racket, I think. I wore my new dress with a dinosaur on the front. A dinosaur, huh? said the cheese man. I smoothed my skirt very lovely. Yes, I said, it's a Tyrannosaurus Dottie. You mean a Tyrannosaurus Rex, he said. No, I mean a Tyrannosaurus Dottie, because Rex is the boy and Dottie is the girl, I explained. The cheese man stood behind his camera. Say cheese, he told me. Yeah, only guess what? I don't actually know why I have to say that word, because what's cheese got to do with it, I asked. Cheese makes you smile said the cheese man. I shook my head. Mm, no, not me. Cheese doesn't make me smile, I said. Because sometimes I eat a cheese sandwich for lunch and I don't even giggle when I swallow that thing. The cheese man did a big breath. <sighs> Could you just say it, please? He asked. Yes, I said. I can please just say it. Only don't forget to tell me when you're ready, because one time my grandma, my grandpa Frank Miller was taking my picture, and he didn't tell me he was ready. And then one of my eyes turned out open, and the other one turned out closed. I made the face to show him. See? See how my eyes? See how one of them is open, and the other one is... All of a sudden, the cheese man took my picture. <gasps> my mouth came wide open at him. Hey! How come you did that? How come you took my picture? Because I wasn't even ready yet. The cheese man kept on clicking his camera. Pretty soon he looked at the next person in line. Next, he said, I stamped my foot. Yeah, only I wasn't ready, I tell you, so I need another turn, I said. Just then my teacher came over and she pulled me away from there. She sat me next to her on the bench. Her name is Mrs. She has another name too, but I just like Mrs. And that's all. Mrs. had settled down to me. Then me and her watched the rest of the children get their pictures taken. My bestest friend named Lucille went next. She had a blue satin ribbon in her hair. My Nana says the ribbon brings out the blue in my eyes, she told the cheese man. She opened them real wide. See them? See their color? They are robin eggs blue with just a hint of lavender. The cheese man sucked in his cheeks. He was getting frustration in him, I think. Could you please just say cheese? He grouched. Lou smiled. Lucille smiled real big with all her teeth. Cheese, she sang in a very loud voice. Cheese, 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 cheese. Then she kept on saying cheese till the cheese man said, knock it off. After that, she was done. Lucille skipped over to me and Mrs. Did you see me? She asked. Did you see how good I said cheese? That's because I'm going to be a model when I grow up. So I already know how. She fluffed her fluffy hair. The camera is my friend, she said. Mrs. rolled her eyes way up at the ceiling. I looked up there too, but I didn't see anything. After that, it was time for the classic, the class picture. The class picture is when all of room nine lines up in two rows. The biggie kids stand in back and the shorty kids stand in front. I am a shorty kid, only that's nothing to be ashamed of. I stood next to Polly Allen Puffer. He looked very admiring at my dinosaur dress. Dinosaurs bite people's heads off, he said. I did a frown. Yeah, only they don't even scare me because there's no such thing as dinosaurs anymore, I told him. So there's still such thing as monsters that can bite your head off, said Polly Allen Puffer. A monster lives right under your bed, I bet. My brother says that everybody has a monster under their bed. He poked his finger at me. Even you, Junie B, he said. I got shivers on my arms. No, I do not either, Polly Allen Puffer, I said. Yes, you do, he said back. 
My brother is in seventh grade and he says the monster waits till you're asleep. Then he crawls up next to you and he lies down on your pillow and he practices fitting your head in his mouth. <gasps> I covered up my ears, but Polly Allen Puffer just talked louder. I can even prove it, he said. Didn't you ever wake up with a drool spot on your pillow? I thought very hard. Yeah, so? So where do you think it came from? He asked. It came from the monster under your bed. That's where it's the monster drool, Junie B. Jones. I shook my head real fast. No, no, it is not, Polly Allen Puffer. You stop saying that and I mean it. He raised up his eyebrows. Well, where did it come from then? You don't drool on your pillow, do you? You're not a baby, are you? He said. No, don't call me that. I'm not a baby, I yelled. Polly Allen Puffer crossed his arms. So where did the drool come from then? He asked again. I don't know, I said. But my daddy told me there's no such thing as monsters. So what? Daddies have to say that, said Polly Allen Puffer. That's how you go to sleep at night and not bother them. He squinted his eyes at me. Why do you think daddies and mommy sleep together in the same room anyway? It's so they can protect each other from the monster or else their heads might get chewed off. Just then I wrinkled up my nose at that terrible thought. Then I hanged out my tongue. I did a sick face. And guess what? The cheese man took the class picture. Chapter two, just say right. After school pictures, we went back to room nine. I put my head down on my table. There's no such thing as monsters. There's no such thing as monsters, I whispered to just myself, because my very own daddy told me that, and he wouldn't even lie to me, probably. Mrs. said for me to sit up in my chair. She passed out work for us to do. It was called printing our letters. Only I didn't actually feel like doing that. I tapped on my bestest friend named Lucille. Guess what, Lucille? There's no such thing as monsters. There's really, really not. And so a monster doesn't even live under my bed, probably. Right, Lucille? Right? Right? Shh! I'm doing my letters, she said. Yes, Lucille, I know you're doing your letters. Only I just wanted to tell you about the monster, because he's not even real. Right? Lucille didn't say right. How come you're not saying right, Lucille? Just say right, okay? Just say monsters aren't real, and I won't even bother you anymore. All of a sudden, Lucille did a mad breath at me. <gasps> now look what you made me do, Junie B. You made me ruin my big G. I told you not to bother me. She quick grabbed her paper and run to Mrs. to fix it. I tapped my fingers on the table. Then I turned around and looked at, and then I turned around and looked behind me. I smiled at a boy named Crybaby William. Guess what, William? There's no such thing as monsters. So a monster doesn't live under my bed, probably. Right, William? Right? Right? William moved his seat away from me. I followed him in my chair. I'm right, don't you think, William? A monster really doesn't live under my bed, does he? Plus, also, he doesn't put my head in his mouth. William slided his chair away some more. I scooted after him. Just say right, okay, William? Just say there's not a monster on my bed, and I will be on my way. William picked up his chair, and he carried it all the way to the middle of the floor. That's how come I had to carry my chair to the middle of the floor, too. I sat down and smiled very sweet. Right, William? I am right, aren't I? I said, only too bad for me. Because just then I felt hands on my shoulders. I looked up. It was Mrs. I did a gulp. <clears throat> Hello, how are you today? I said kind of nervous. Mrs. zoomed my chair back to my table. It was not fun. I quick picked up my pencil. Guess what? I'm going to do my schoolwork now, I said. Plus also I'm not even going to talk because I don't actually like anyone in this area. Mrs. tapped her foot at me. Love your shoes, I said real soft. Her foot kept tapping. Only just then a very great thing happened, and it's called the bell rang for the end of school. I hurried up out the door. Then me and my other bestest friend, Grace, run to the bus together. Grace, Grace, guess what? There's no such thing as monsters, and so I don't even have one under my bed, probably. Right, Grace? Right? That Grace didn't say right. That's how come I grabbed her by the shoulders and I jiggled and jiggled her because I was fed up with these people. That's why. How come you won't say right, Grace? How come nobody will say right? Because I'm getting the end of my rope here with this thing. That Grace took my hands off her. I can't say right because a monster might live under your bed, Judy B.
she said. <gasps> My eyes got big and wide at her. No, Grace, no, do not say that. Do not say a monster might live under my bed, because that cannot even be true, or else I would have spotted that guy by now. No, you wouldn't, she said. My big sister said that monsters can turn themselves invisible when you look at them, so that's how come nobody ever sees them. That Grace looked serious at me. That makes sense, don't you think? Huh, Junie B? Right? Just then my throat got dry and my stomach got the shakies. I looked out the window very upset and I didn't say right. Tune in next time for chapter three.